So we're going to jump into some Synology backup videos today, or at least this tutorial is going to be a video over that. And we're going to be covering three major things in Synology. We're going to cover active backup, which is almost like an agent. You can put it on servers and Windows workstations and other things. And then we also have our cloud backup to back up our entire Synology box up into the cloud just in case uh, something here catches fire and, uh, you know, nothing's recoverable should there, you know, a disaster happen. And then we're also going to cover some local replications. I already have an SMB share on a free NAS and we're going to be replicating that over to our Synology box as well. So the Synology box is going to actually accomplish all three of these and we're going to be doing uh, pulls when needed, meaning everything will reside on the Synology box as far as uh, the actual scheduling goes. So with all that, let's go ahead and jump into our video. Okay, so with backups, we need to go ahead and touch on that. There's so many things on backups here that I can cover, so I'm going to go really quickly here. Uh, first off, Synology Drive. This is like a Dropbox or Nextcloud type of folder sync. Uh, very cool. They have Windows clients, Mac clients, and then also uh, Debian-based uh, installers for any Debian-based distro. So Ubuntu, Debian, uh, Pop! OS, you name it, it's on here. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that real fast. Uh, as far as its setup goes, just make sure you set up your team folder and enable my drive, and then you can go ahead and install the client and go ahead and configure it on your local PC. Okay, so first we open up the Synology Drive. Now you can either log in uh, through the actual web portal here or you go directly to the station and select Synology Drive right here and it launches into it. So from that, you can say get Synology Drive apps now and then from here it downloads a DB file. So if we click this and right here it automatically senses I was using a Debian based Linux system and downloaded the DEB package. So from here, we can just simply click on the package and it should pull up our software installer and install the package. However, if it doesn't install the package, we can simply launch into terminal, go into our downloads folder. Let's see where it is here. And we see the Synology drive client. It does not have executable privileges. Um, so we can easily do that. We'll uh, sudo Synology drive client. And then we can simply run this and install it by using dpkg, so dpkg-i Synology Drive Client. It also helps if you do it as sudo. Okay, so now we've installed the client. We'll exit out of here, and we should have Synology Drive Client installed right here on our applications. We'll go ahead and launch that. And right here, here's our welcome screen. We can just hit start now. We can say sync task, where it continually syncs, which is great. We'll go ahead and hit the little search icon, see if it finds our, our device on 69.5, which it did. And then we just simply sign in using our preferred sign in. So let's go ahead, paste it in here, and hit next. We'll say proceed anyway. Didn't have an actual security certificate yet. Okay, now that we've got our username and password entered in, we can simply select what we're actually doing. Um, select the folders on the computer and Synology NAS will be synced. So we want to actually sync the Titus Synology drive. We'll just say a local folder. So we could actually change this by hitting the pencil here and selecting a specific folder out of here, but I don't really want to do that. We'll just go ahead and just say everything in Synology drive needs to be synced to the Synology device. From here, we'll do that and hit done. So just to test this out, I want to go ahead and create uh, just a file in here. Let's uh, go to our home directory and downloads, and we're just going to grab, let's say, this glitch to overlay zip and drop it in that file for us. So we'll come down here, go to Synology, paste, and this should sync up with our, our drive. So I'm curious to see what happens when I refresh this. So here is the actual drive. It did sync up. Now on the first one, I did get an error message and I went ahead and killed the Synology drive client. And if you go into your task manager and just type Synology, you'll see that it has a cloud drive UI, daemon, and then also a connect. 
I killed all these and then just simply relaunched and then it seemed to connect just fine. Uh, after doing that, everything I've dropped into my actual folder over here on the home, Synology Drive, uh, it goes ahead and creates whatever it is. So let's go ahead and grab another file just to show you. We'll go cut this music file, come back here and paste. And then we'll just simply refresh. It says the file was updated on the lower hand corner. And if we go into here, click it again, it already grabbed that file. It's 10 megs. It's literally so, so fast that I don't even realize a lot of times it's syncing. So I absolutely love this. This is a neat little sync. Uh, uh, it's almost like Dropbox, but a local Dropbox kind of deal or a local next cloud kind of deal as well. So uh, very reminiscent of that. I, I really dig this client that they have. Uh, I thought it was very good, very well done client. Now this does have Windows based clients as well, and you can easily install them and use the Synology drive using it as well. So with Synology Drive done, the next thing I wanted to touch on is Active Backup for Business. This is actually like a Synology sign-in. You have to sign in with your Synology account to really get this. However, it is very powerful when it comes to businesses. So you can actually put this on multiple PCs. So if you're in a small business with like, you know, five, ten PCs, whatever it is, you can actually go here and add devices now. This is only for Windows-based devices where it'll back up the entire PC to it uh, and it adds like a little agent onto it and, and you can do that. Cool thing here though is it also has physical servers for backups. You add this device and you have these update agents that do the exact same thing, but it does it for Windows Server, which is also very, very cool. And then we have file server. This is where we're actually gonna do this. We're gonna add a server an SMB server, uh, because we have our free NAS back there, we need to back up. So this would be a great time to actually utilize this. And we'll do 192 and put its address in. So we'll sign in here. Yes. This will go ahead and say, do you want versioning? Do you want mirroring? What do you want to do? Uh, and for this, we're going to go ahead and do mirroring since uh, I don't want to really change any files. If it's on the free NAS, I want it completely mirrored over here. I don't care about versioning or anything like that. But you might want to do uh, multi-versions if you're concerned about that. I'm not. And then we also have incremental. This is going to be the fastest. Mirroring is a one-to-one -one copy. And then multi-versioned is, you know, you keep multiple versions if a file changes. With this, we'll back up the actual main pool. This is roughly three or four terabytes, so this is gonna take a long time, uh, and we're probably gonna see our resource monitor spike after doing this, but hey, let's uh, let's do that. We'll name this FreeNAS, a local path. Let's go ahead and put this on our main pool, and then we're gonna actually create a folder and call it FreeNAS Backup, and we'll select this folder in our main pool. Uh, we don't want vol volume shadow copies, and we're going to go ahead and do it. Volume shadow copy is more of like a, if you're syncing a Windows-based share, you might want to enable that. And then we'll put it on a schedule. Uh, I would say let's do it weekly. If this was a business, I would do it Monday through Friday, you know, all, all the work days. But we'll just do it on the weekend and run it only during the weekend. So uh, we'll do it 3 a.m., I shouldn't be up unless I'm really doing some crazy edits. So uh, what are we going to back up? We'll just back up everything and hit next and apply. Back up now, yes. So this should be interesting. I'm curious to see if it pulls in everything. Uh, I imagine it will, but this will probably, yeah, it's, it's pulling in all my video files, all of everything I have. So every single YouTube video I've ever done is going to be on here. This is going to take a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this for now because as I record, I actually stream this recording directly to that NAS box and I don't want to mess up the recording. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop that and then I'll start it after I finish up today. But uh, this is going to be pretty cool. So I'm going to be replicating my free NAS SMB share completely to my Synology box as well in this destination of the storage pool. Uh, other notable features in the active backup is virtual machines. This looks like VMware vSphere, which I don't have here. I'm using XCPNG, which is a Zen server uh, fork. 
and then we can do uh, linking and other things. Uh, I believe there is also a, also a Synology Drive uh, sync. So if you bought two Synology boxes, you could actually sync them together and replicate between them. So that, that's very powerful, especially in a business where you, you would want redundancy. So we've covered Active Backup, Synology Drive. So Synology Drive is really good. Just think of it as like a Dropbox equivalent. Active Backup for business, you can do agents and things on specific PCs and back up the entirety of that uh, PC or server. And we're also using the local file share where we're grabbing an SMB share from a free NAS box and replicating that to here we're actually mirroring it so that's pretty powerful and then finally no backup would be complete until we send it up to the cloud so if my house blows up or uh, this room catches fire it would be completely okay so to do that we do cloud sync and we would need to sync this up now i've already added backblaze in here i highly recommend black backblaze i think i have an affiliate link i'll, I'll try and drop it in the description below but if you don't click on it don't don't feel bad it's like, I don't think I've ever seen anything from them. Uh, their affiliate program's kind of crappy, but their service is excellent, so, ah, eh, well. This right here, if we click the plus sign, you can actually select from all these different ones. I like Backblaze because it's the cheapest. Uh, the B2, I do about a terabyte of mirroring every night at a small business, and that runs that small business roughly $5 a month. $5 a month, an entire terabyte is going through their stuff, um, which is amazing. And it does such a great job. Like I've tried other uh, solutions that are cheap, like using OneDrive or Dropbox. Those suck. Don't, don't bother with that. Backblaze beats them hands down, and it's a lot cheaper than, than using their solution. So for them, you would just click on this, hit next. You'd put your application ID and your application key in. The ID will never change. You can always get it. But once you establish a key, I, I believe that's hidden from then on. So don't lose your key. Otherwise, you're going to have to delete it and recreate it. Uh, and it's very secure. So with this, um, I'll go ahead and pull up this guy and see if I can't edit it and show you some of the advanced features of this. So one of the really cool things is when you're setting it up for the first time, I'm just going to show you through task settings here in Backblaze, setting encryption. What this does is it encrypts all your files before storing it on Black Backblaze. So the Synology box encrypts the files and then sends it out. So what this does is when it's backing up my files, it will actually encrypt them and then get stored there. That means if Backblaze or someone else or someone got a hold of my storage bucket that's sitting in the cloud, it's all encrypted, there's nothing they can do about it. So that's extremely powerful. Um, that's why I really love Backblaze is because of, you can do that encryption, store it, and, and then you're, you're good to go. Uh, other things is you can do file filters and other things in here if you only wanted to back up certain files. However, I think I just have it set to just back up everything in a, in a folder I've specified, which is the Synology main folder. So that is the cloud sync. I'll probably at the same time start moving like all of my completed files from uh, my free NAS over to the Synology, dropping them into Sol Synology main. So I'll have local replication going on and I'll be taking that file and uploading it to Backblaze. So that's like a crazy crazy redundant system there you have raid 10 so you can have multiple hard drive failures and still be up and going and then on top of that we have replication between the free nas box and this box so both boxes would have to go out and then on top of that you would have the actual cloud-based backups which is very very powerful and at sitting at the hub of the synology box we have all those agents and things we can tie in and get all that information backed up to it and then restore at will and just so many great features here i thought i'd showcase all this today these are all the official ones from synology and they do offer ssh access so if you're a terminal junkie and you want to get right into their linux based distribution and do all this through command line you absolutely can but for today's video i just wanted to kind of keep it simple so there you have it. That is Synology in a nutshell. I absolutely love this backup. It doesn't matter what happens. I sleep so comfortably at night knowing one, 
I probably won't ever see any downtime with this setup. And two, if I do see downtime, it's probably going to be very minimal because I'll be able to get it from my replicated thing. And then three, let's say, you know, some major disaster happens and I'm not able to actually connect to any of these boxes. I don't have to worry about it because it's all sitting in the cloud where I can download and access this encrypted backup which is awesome. So all over the map, I'm completely covered. This is pretty much how I think every single business should be covered uh, because if you don't have these types of backups, you're really doing yourself a disservice and setting yourself up for maybe some heartbreak because I've done some data recoveries for businesses and whenever you get into the data recovery realm, you never get 100%. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. A big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.